Greetings Gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to do something you may or may not have ever heard of or had. I'm going to make Yorkshire fish cakes. Or Sheffield fish cakes. So this was requested a while ago by somebody called Nick Stur um, and at the time I had no idea what I was talking about. Fish cakes, fish cake, isn't it? But you got a bit persistent, so uh, I, I had a look online to find out what it's all about. And it, and it turns out the Yorkshire fish cake, is it's not all over Yorkshire. We don't get them here in Leeds, but they're invented in Sheffield, down south. And, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think it's, it's down to the individual chip shop. But what you get with the Yorkshire fish cake, or a Sheffield fish cake, is batter, tatter, fish, tatter, batter, all right? So it's a sandwich of fish, not minced fish or anything, actual joined up fish, between slices of potato and then all covered in batter, deep fried, lovely. So I think I've had one in the dim distant past, but uh, yeah, it's time I had another one. So I'm gonna make them. Anyway, enough waffle, let's get on with it. So normally I would use a beer batter for something like this, but um, I've done that a million times. So today I'm doing a different kind of batter that doesn't involve beer, but it does involve bicarbonate of soda, baking soda. So I've got a cup full of flour, teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of the bicarb. And, and the, you know, this is just a, a fizzing agent, stir that all together. And then add enough water to make a paste, a runny paste, like thick paint. And the bicarb thing was suggested by Bad Yossa, hello, who's <laughs> um, uh, an agency chef, does this kind of stuff all the time. Now, he, he, yeah, so apart from the, the bicarb, said whisk it, whisk it good, get lots of air in there and uh, let it rest for an hour but he also said a teaspoon of turmeric for colour. Now I wouldn't dispute that but I don't think a chip shop would ever do that. That's still a bit too thick, a bit more water. Okay, that looks um, nice and smooth, hasn't got much air in it, but it's got a nice consistency. So I'm going to put that in the fridge to rest for one hour. So the other ingredients for the fish cake, apart from the batter, are potato and fish. Um, these are cod fillets and, well, that's a potato. So fish cakes, you know, the, the Yorkshire type and, the, and the, the more normal type, which is actually, you know, just a, a mash of potato and fish and usually parsley done in breadcrumbs not batter um, they're just a way to use up you know the sort of tail ends of fish and other scrap bits but you know still good and I'm looking forward to this because you get entire recognizable fish not um, stuff that could be anything so peel your spud I'm only doing two by the way at the moment that's enough fish to do probably six or eight. And then get your magic knife, TM, and set it to three to four millimeter slices. That's about a quarter of an inch. And just whack it. So I've got four nice slices of potato and it's important not to have them too thick because they won't cook in time and they're not generally parboiled or anything. So, and also these, these spuds, they're the biggest I could get, but really they're not big enough. However, we will have small Yorkshire fish cakes. Actually, change my mind. I'm going to do, well, four, two each. Get a bit of spud and cut the fish to the same shape and size. And pop that on your potato and then make your sandwich. My um, sort of cookie instinct tells me that I want something green in there, but that's not done, so I'm not doing it. All right, so there's my four Tatian fish sandwiches. 
and some leftover cod. So I'm, I've sort of built this into a little tower and I'm going to wrap that in cling film and freeze it. And at some point I'll make fish fingers out of that. That'll be fun. Now, whenever I do anything that involves deep frying fish or chips, um, anything in breadcrumbs or batter, there's always somebody will comment and say, you should be using beef dripping. And they're not wrong. But uh, <laughs> I've, I've always thought beef dripping was expensive because it is. From your butcher, uh, you will pay like a pound for maybe 100 grams. And, uh, you know, you maybe need 10 packs of that. So, you know, a tenner for a bunch of fat is too much. Anyway, um, did a bit of research and I found, sorry, this only applies to Brits, but I found this Britannia beef dripping from Morrison's 70p for 250 grams which is amazing so I've got five and so that, that should last me a while and the other thing people talk about tallow now I've never actually seen that on sale anywhere um, and it turns out it is basically this white fat is in, in, the, in the dripping is actually tallow. The difference is normally if you get beef dripping from a butcher it, it will have meat juices sort of jellyfied at the bottom which are absolutely amazing and um, yeah so that's the difference. This doesn't have any meat juices this is actually tallow. Yes! Result! So I'll just slice up I don't know two or three maybe four packs of this and for the frying your fat needs to be 190 degrees celsius right so that's actually four packs i've got one left um but that's okay that makes the pan about half full so now we are ready to make our yorkshire fish cakes duh, duh, duh. when you take your batter out the fridge give it a, a stir or a whisk dip your fish cake in i don't know how this is going to hold together or even if it is but uh, fingers crossed let's go now while we're on the subject of fritters uh, I do remember as a kid we used to have fritters and in South Yorkshire this was a fritter a slice of potato dipped in batter and fried and it sounds like a disgusting thing, <laughs> health-wise it probably is, but um, they're great. So we'll have a couple of those as a surprise for Mrs. Keith Cooks, because I, I happen to know she thinks they have a different name. Okay, I reckon they're done. I'm just going to check the temperature because I did say 190 earlier, but I reckon that was actually too hot. Yeah, I think you'd be better off doing it um, around 150 Celsius, just to give it more time to cook. So I'll take those out. I've got the oven on low just to keep these warm while my fritters are cooking. Right, here we go. Yorkshire tempura with <laughs> Mrs. Kiko. <laughs> Yorkshire tempura. Well, it's my, right. little, my little jokey yeah, thing. I've been looking expect. forward to this. You want kumkuri? Yeah, yes, please. Because I'd never heard of these until Keith mentioned them. Right, there you go. You have to have vinegar. Balsamic <laughs> vinegar. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. mine, mine did Yorkshire. Well, I'm going to have a taste of one without well, any seasoning. I reckon malt. I do as well. So, yeah. Oh yeah. That one's mine. Is it? Why? Because it's on my side. What? It's hot. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Oh yeah. Oh that's nice. That is really nice. <laughs> oh yeah. Tatey's all hot. cooked. Yeah. No, Tatey's all cooked. And that fish got a lovely taste to it. What fish did you use? No, it's mozzarella. Ha uh ha. -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's cod. All right. But you could use any white fish or, you know, 
if you want to be really posh, we'll use salmon or something. I don't care. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, make these. Mm. Oh, it doesn't need any seasoning at all. Are you eating my fish cake? <laughs> <laughs> so it, where, where's the salt then? Is the salt in the batter? No, I just chucked it on. Oh, right. Oh, well, I there's, there's a bit of salt eating. in the batter, mm. but yeah. Okay. Um, hoo -hoo. <laughs> Bonus thing. Flat learning curve. Try that. Those are fritters, aren't they? Oh, you bugger. <laughs> You're not supposed uh, to say that. Well, you should have warned me. <laughs> say scallops. No. Don't you call them scallops? No, I call them fritters. My dad used to make these. Did he call them scallops? Called them fritters. Oh well. Here we are. Frittering, frittering away the evening. Mm -hmm. mm. They're really nice. <laughs> They're just a thing you do. That's unbelievable. What? Isn't it? What? What? Tatty and butter. Who would eat that? Mine. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, we haven't we haven't finished yet because it's a bonus thing. Uh huh. But it'll be ten minutes. Oh all right. Okay. Bye. See you later. Mm. Uh -uh. Right. The other thing. This was requested a while ago by John Glynn, and he then went on to request it on every single video that I did thereafter. I think I'd said at some point. Nah, that sounds horrible. I, d I don't like the sound of that at all. But then I mentioned it to Mrs. Keith Cook and she said, Mmm, that sounds lovely. <laughs> so it's da, 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 pineapple fritters. Because I've got the fat, I've got the batter. And uh, John Glynn says, with salt and vinegar, which sounds extremely bizarre to me. But you know, the vinegar will make it like a sweet and sour thing with the pineapple and um, they always have salt so yeah <sighs> let's get on with it then <laughs> so I've got the oil heating up again and all you do is open the can these are in syrup and just fish out pineapple ring we only ever had pineapple in this form when I was a kid so I couldn't believe it when I saw a real one. <laughs> it's like, what do you do with it? All those spines and everything. So get your pineapple rings and drain them really well on kitchen paper. Otherwise the batter won't stick. Extremely technical process. Dip it in the batter, pop it in the pan. Ooh, yeah. Right, here we go. Taste test part two. So the fritters. Oh yeah. Uh, lovely and golden and stinky hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not touching that for a while. <laughs> well, yeah, look at that. Cool. Mm. Yeah. I've never seen them made at home before. This is, uh, this is something you get from the chippy. And you eat on the way home out of the bag when it's cooled down enough. I, d I don't know if I've ever seen pineapple fritters in a chippy. Really? I don't spend a lot of time in chippies and you know I don't mess about I get fish and chips all right John Glynn says salt and vinegar well put salt and vinegar on that one and let me try this one as is you might like it better. well I can try both then can't I Keith you said it's a taste test <laughs> oh yeah crispy batter plus hot sweet pineapple yum You'll burn your mouth. <laughs> Let's try the salty one. That is sneakily good. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the way, it's hot. <laughs> We better leave you now. <laughs> I think he wants you to 
do all that stuff, you know, subscribing and liking and telling your friends and cooking what he makes and... Make a donation, uh, become a patron. Yeah. Uh -huh. Put your fork down before you burn your mouth and again. Thanks you. for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching. And see you next time. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.